So this is the last video for the capstone assessment called SMOKE. Again, it's a letter and a flyer for a community festival with some fundraising. So what you want to do is take this letter and send it to certain people in the community so that they will attend and perhaps donate some money. So you have this uh, template letter where you are going to insert an address block for each person to whom you will send this document and the greeting line, which is Dear Mr. Smith, for example. So you have your uh, template letter with the table you've edited and then the flyer on the second page. So in step number 14, what we want to do is begin the mail merge process. So we'll go under mailings and you can go through the steps up here, but I like to go through start mail merge and go through the step-by-step -step mail merge wizard. So the first step is to choose the dot type of document that you are uh, using. So in this case, we are starting out with a letter. So you go down here to step number two, which is starting document. So here you choose the document or the file that you want to um, be your template for the mail merge. So we're going to use this document as our starting document. So you can choose use the current document. So in step number three, we will select the recipients for the document. So this is who we will send the letters to um, those people in the community um, to which we want to send this information. So we're going to use an existing list. And that existing list is an Excel file, which has what we call patrons. And it has the name of these particular people um, to which we might send this document. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to review the data really quickly and then I'm going to close that document. You really want to have that document closed when you complete the mail merge, just to make sure it's able to pull in the data. So what we'll do is browse to find that file. And I've got it on my desktop under my Word folder. And I'm going to pull it in here. So it knows there's one sheet in that file and that the first row of data contains column headers. So that was the last name, first name, address, and so forth. That was at the top of each column in the Excel file. So we're going to click on OK, and it actually gives you a preview of the data so you can double check and make sure that it will pull the data in correctly. Okay, so we want to um, edit the recipient list and sort by last name in ascending order. So we just go here and we can sort uh, ascending. And then we want to filter the data to select only those with the zip code of 49800. So we're going to go over to where the zip code is and we can filter based on 49800. Okay, so that provides us with only two recipients for this document. So <clears throat> what we want to do is click on OK here since we finished kind of editing and pulling out that data that we need. We're going to go back to the document and add the address block and the greeting line. So the address block will be the address of each person in that um, list of recipients, which is two people right now. So what we're going to do is go to the next step and write your letter. And I highlighted address block and I'll just go ahead and delete it. Actually, let's not delete it. I'll show you how to what it will do um, when you select the address block. So over here it has Kind of default uh, address blocks, uh, greeting lines, uh, and there are others that you can use uh, for if you wanted to pull in the person's last name, first name, 
and say, um, say you wanted to add the person's first name in the letter, uh, text of the letter, so that it's a little more customized. But we don't need that. All we're going to do here is add the address block, and it's going to ask you know, how you want everything to be formatted, and you have some options there. We're just going to um, go with the default, and you can look at the different people that are in your recipient list to make sure everything looks correct. Okay, so we'll click on OK there. And you can see it adds the field here for the address block. It's got those two little arrows next to it. Now we still have our text that we had typed in to kind of uh, hold that place so that we knew where to insert the address block. Okay, so the greeting line is the same thing. We've got this text here that it's kind of a placeholder so that we know where to include the greeting line block. Um, so that's just text that has been typed in. It's not an actual field code. So we'll go here to the greeting line and we want it to say dear and the person's name. So the, uh, the different options you have are here um, and it depends on what you want uh, as far as the person's name, format and so forth. So you can see here it will include the person's name. So you can see right here in the solution file, this is what it should look like for Mrs. Trenton. Okay, so we're going to leave that as is and you can preview um, from your recipient list here. So we'll click on OK because that looks correct and then we'll remove this text that was the placeholder we were using for the um, greeting line. Okay, so our next step in number 15 is to preview the letters. Okay, so we can look at the first letter and you can see it's pulled in the person's name and address and then it has the greeting for that particular person. Over here, you can preview each letter so if I wanted to see the one for the other person, that is, um, has Mrs. Trenton's um, information here, okay? So again, this is the template. It's just showing you a preview of the data. So this address is spaced a little weird. Um, we want it to be single spaced. So in that case, we're going to select the first two lines of the address block and remove all paragraph spacing, okay? So we're going to go back to the Home tab and we can go to the paragraph spacing here and choose line spacing options to make sure we get all of the options. So here we want it to be zero and we want it to be single, okay? So we've removed those paragraph spacing options, okay? So it should be single spaced now looks a little bit better. So next we want to finish the mail merge process. So here we're going to complete the merge for the last step. Now the, what you need to remember is it's not completed at this point even though it says complete the merge. In order to complete the merge you must choose edit individual letters. Okay. And this will actually take you to the point where you complete the merge. So we'll click on OK or edit individual letters. And we want to merge all of the letters and click on OK. Now this is going to open up a new document, usually called Letters 1. If you've done more than one mail merge, it might be Letters 2 or Letters 3, for example. So what we want to do is pull this into the previous document, um, our template. Now, what you need to remember is this is the merged uh, document. So for um, Blake, you have the letter and the uh, brochure. And this is sort of like the template letter that was, um, that was merged. And then you have Trenton, so you have hers, 
and the, um, the document here. So you've got this template letter in, in which the addresses have now been merged along with the greeting lines. So this is the merged data, okay? It's just based on that template. Now, I will tell you that when you go in and make corrections here, double check before you complete the mail merge, double check to make sure everything looks correct, okay? So we changed the spacing here, and if any other corrections need to be made, Go ahead and do that at this point before you complete that merge in step six and you edit the individual letters, okay? Um, so you want to go ahead and um, edit and make corrections before you actually complete the merge and um, it creates that letters one document, okay? Otherwise, if you don't, then you have these documents that are merged and you would have to make the corrections on each individual document. So think about if you have 100 customers in your uh, recipients file, then your merged document will have 100 letters and you don't wanna go into each one of those and make the corrections. You could always close this letters one and then go back into your original template and go back through the merge process, which is much easier than editing here, okay? So just as a side note, you want to make sure that you have done that, okay? So what we want to do is copy all of this, and this is just mainly for this assignment. Normally you would not do this step, okay? This is just for the assignment to make sure that you have all of the uh, letters in one document so that you don't have to upload multiple documents. That would be graded. So in this case, we are going to uh, go to this document and we are going to select everything in this merged document and paste it at the bottom of the original template. Okay, again, you don't normally do this, but in this case, we will so that we have one document to be graded. So you can press Control A and select everything and I'm going to right click and copy. And then I'll go back into my template file and the instructions say to go down to the end of the document and we're going to uh, click at the very bottom under the table and I'm going to press control enter to insert a, a page break and I'm going to copy or I'm sorry paste those other letters at this point you should have seven pages okay the reason for that is you have your original template letter here at the top and then you have another letter for Blake um, which is the merged letter with the brochure and then you have another one for Trenton with the brochure so that's really six pages and then you have a blank page at the end Okay, so in this case, make sure you save it and you can upload it for grading and make sure that you check the rubric if you do have any mistakes that you need to correct.